Greetings ladies and gentlemen, my name is Mengs, and I welcome you guys to the start of a brand new Civilization V playthrough. This time around I'm going to be playing as Suleiman of the Ottoman Empire, also known as the Ottomans Empire, yes. Um, so why am I playing as the Ottomans? Well, uh, allow me to explain. So back in the day I used to play a lot of multiplayer Civ with my friends. We used to have huge free-for-all battles with up to 6 to 8 players duking it out. And um, in order to not pick cheesy civilizations, we usually went for random leaders. So, you know, everyone got a random leader. Uh, you couldn't complain about someone picking a cheesy Civ. Sometimes people got good civilizations, other times people got crappy civilizations. And I got the Ottoman Empire on so many different occasions. I think I got them like three or four times. It becomes sort of like a running gag. Oh, your Manx is getting the Ottoman Empire again. And thus the joke of the Ottoman Empire. Empire was born. So, the Ottoman Empire usually gets a lot of flack for being a bad Civ. People don't really understand how they work, they are a little bit weird, they're a naval-oriented Civ with two unique units and neither of them are naval units, and yet they have a naval civilization bonus, which just seems very weird. Um, but uh, when I played with the Ottomans, uh, my enemies quickly realized how fearsome their unique units were when used correctly, and that's what I'm hoping to recreate in this Let's Play. I'm hoping to show you guys exactly how powerful the Ottomans can be if played right, so... We'll see if I can make it happen or not. So let's talk a little bit about these guys, shall we? Their civilization bonus is called Barbary Corsairs. Uh, it means that every single melee naval unit gets a... Uh, prize ship promotion, and the prize ship promotion allows you to capture uh, defeated enemy ships. I do believe it's like a 50% chance or so, it's not a 100% chance, it is a chance. Um, although it may have gotten changed recently, I, I'm not actually sure, I haven't read the patch notes, because now it says allowing them to capture defeated ships, but I'm not sure if it if it's uh, still a chance or not, or if you do it all the time, but it is pretty reliable. So essentially, let's say you have a privateer, you kill an enemy frigate, boom, a healthy frigate appears right next to the frigate you just killed, uh, ready to move into attack, This the very same turn you kill it, uh, which is pretty fucking broken when you think about it. Like, it is not really possible to challenge the Ottomans to, in, to naval combat unless you vastly outnumber them. And I've uh, I faced the Ottomans in sea combat before, and it's almost as hopeless as trying to go against Japan, <laughs> pretty much, because you're just gonna get outnumbered. Um, so yeah, uh, they also only pay one third of the usual cost for naval unit maintenance, which means that you can field a very large naval naval army without necessarily losing a lot of gold. So they're very naval oriented. So you'd think they have a ship or something as their unique unit, but no. Let's talk about two of their unique units. So the first one is called the Janissary. They replace the Musketmen, and these guys are absolute beasts, let me tell you that. These guys are probably up there with the Impi and the Longbowmen uh, for the most powerful unique unit in the entire game. So, um, uh, these guys are similar to normal Musketmen, but they start with two unique promotions. The first one, actually, they're not unique. Uh, the first one is Formation, which is the same uh, the Lancers get. So they get a 25% combat bonus whenever they are on the offense. So these guys are meant to attack. You don't want to fortify these guys up, you want to be the one who deals the first blow. Um, and the second promotion they get is similar to the Aztec's Jaguar. Whenever they kill a unit, they heal themselves. However, unlike the Jaguars, who only heal themselves for 25 hit points when they defeat an enemy unit, the Janissaries heal themselves for a whooping 50 hit points whenever they land a killing blow. Now, the downside to this, as um, unlike the Jaguars, the, the Janissaries can't use this ability against Barbarians, but normally when you have Musketmen out, Barbarians aren't usually around by that time, especially not when you're playing on Immortal difficulty as I am right now. But the thing is, what's so amazing about the Janissaries is that their unique promotions, both of them in fact, carry over when you promote them to Riflemen and all the way up to Mechanized Infantry. Which means that in the late game you can have an army of infantry that gets a bonus when they attack and heals themselves for 50 hit points whenever they kill units. It eff effectively means that they are almost impossible to kill as long as they continuously gain kills. And this is what my friends discovered as soon as I went to war with these guys. They just would not die. They just kept healing themselves back up to full hit points whenever they killed someone. And they were virtually unstoppable, and I conquered empires with these guys. Now, their second unique unit may feel like 
feel a little bit bleak in comparison, but do not underestimate these guys. The Sipai. 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 I, I actually tried to watch a video on how to pronounce these guys' names properly, but I couldn't, like, I didn't quite understand it. It's, you can say Sipai, uh, but I think just, I'm just gonna call them Sipai. So these guys are unique lancers. Um, they have one extra movement, one extra line of sights, and they don't pay any movement cost to pillage terrain. Now, they seem like a very weird unit. It's like Lancers that specializes in pillaging. Like, what the hell is the deal with these guys? Well, these guys can absolutely ravage improvements. If these guys come in, come behind enemy lines, they can essentially pillage five improvements in a single turn. Because they have a movement of five. Um, and they can just pillage for free. They don't pay any movement cost to pillage. So, uh, they are absolutely ridiculous, you know. Uh, if you get a few Sifis behind enemy lines, you can essentially just pillage all of the enemy improvements, and you can disrupt their economy badly. And what's so great about Sifai is that they're not essentially meant to be used for combat, they're basically recon units. With a great line of sight and movement, you can use them to scout out, you can use them to gain vision for your artillery to siege cities, um, and they do get their promotions carried on uh, with them when they become anti-tank guns, which is the promotions for the Lancers. Which aren't the best unit in the game, but still, um, I'm not going to complain about that. But the true bread and butter of the Ottoman Empire are the Janissaries. They are really the best, if one of the, not the best units in the game, they're, they're certainly up there. Um, and my hope is that I'm going to show you guys just how powerful they can be. So without further ado guys, let us begin our journey and take a look at our starting location. I'm already from the get-go looking really solid here. Um, we start out uh, close to the ocean, which is very typical for the Ottoman Empire. They they do that. We also see that we have marble. Um, if I move one spot to the right, I will actually come next to a desert tile, which means that I'll be able to get a solar plant. However, I'll also be losing out on a source of cocoa. However, I could expand over here, actually, near the mountain, if I do that. And for that reason alone, I actually think I'm going to move. I'm still going to get both the fish tiles. And getting a solar plant in the late game is actually huge, so... I am indeed going to do that. And I'm going to be founding my first city of Istanbul. Now, in this game, I can't actually remember, but I think I turned on Raging Barbarians, because I actually do plan to go for an honor opener. I'm not going to max out honor, I'm going to put one point into it, then I'm going to finish Tradition. And then I'm going to continue down the honor route, because I do plan to go to war very early, and the honor policies really help a lot in that regard. Anyway, we're gonna go for pottery first. Now, I should point out that this game will be slightly larger than the other ones that I played. I'm actually playing on a large Pangaea map with a high sea level. So there are 10 other, or 10 civilizations in this game total, and 20 city-states. So this is a pretty big map. All the leaders are random, so I have no idea who I'm going to face. And, uh, well, who I face will, of course, determine the outcome of this Let's Play. But with 10 leaders, you're bound to see... I, I say, the, the probability of Shaka showing up is pretty, pretty big. And, you know, if you have a game with Shaka in it, well, it's not going to be a boring game. Alright, so off the bat, I'm seeing a lot of good expand locations. Um, it would be really kick-ass if I could get both a river and a mountain. That's, like, almost borderline broken in how good it is. But I could expand next to these mountains in order to get observatories in my other cities. And already we see barbarian encampments with barbarians in them. Uh, they're going to be churning out a lot of barbarians, so I need to get out an archer or something early in order to counteract them. But the hope is that I'm going to get a lot of honor from the honor opener. And that should get me a few extra policies. Um, now, I do believe hard building a monument is the way to go, especially considering they changed the way tradition works. A lot of desert here. If I could somehow get my hands on Petra, that would be really good. I'm actually not sure if this is the ocean or just an inland sea. I do believe it looks like the ocean. Well, hello! Grand Mesa. Could I actually get my hands on a natural wonder? Two ruins right next to each other. You don't see that every day. Um, and we have Genghis Khan. Well, goodbye, city-states. Genghis Khan. Ridiculously aggressive guy. He likes declaring war on everyone. Is particularly fond of bullying city-states. His entire civilization trait revolves around killing city-states. Which means that if you're trying to go for a diplomatic victory and this guy's in the game, um, you're gonna have a very bad time. 
Very, very aggressive, very difficult to deal with. Uh, will most likely end up declaring war on you if he's your neighbor. Never a boring moment when Genghis Khan is involved. However, that is ridiculously close. And we have copper. Well, that's a no-brainer, pretty much. Like, I know where I'm going to expand. But it's so close as well, like, it's right over here. Like, And the good thing about the Grand Mesa is that it is, it is treated as a mountain. Um, so, you do get... You do have the ability to build an observatory. Alright, I'm gonna go for... In fact, I think I'm gonna start off with a tradition opener, because I do will get a solid tree culture per day, which actually beats the small burst of honor you get from unlocking the honor policy. So I'm actually gonna go for tradition first, and then I'm gonna spend uh, my second policy on honor. I do believe that will yield me more culture in, uh, like, total. But, uh, yeah, I see some great expansions all around me here. Um, now we see the barbarian encampments. That can be nice. It will... It, it will make sure that the city-states will give me quests early to defeat these encampments, which could net me some nice uh, um, some nice influence with the different city-states around here. But a lot of desert. Um, could be tricky to find cities when there's desert involved, but normally if you can get a river or two, deserts can become quite valuable. They're usually full of oil in the late game, and um, as I said, if I could somehow get my hands on Petra, that would be absolutely kick-ass. Alright, now what should I go for? I think I should go for archery, actually. Uh, considering there will be a lot of barbarians out, getting archers out early is almost mandatory. Or else you're gonna have a very bad time. It's not like you're gonna be able to get any improvements, so... Uh, you gotta be careful with your scout as well. I'm gonna try not to. I'm gonna send him down here. Maybe I'll be able to get myself a ruin. But it does indeed look like Genghis Khan is going to be my close neighbor, which is usually a bad thing. Um, not how sure, not sure how well that's going to go for me, but I guess we'll find out. All right, we get sailing. I suppose that's okay. You know, free sailing. I'm not going to complain about that. Um, I wonder if I should perhaps buy an archer with my first 140 gold, or is it 200? Um, I can never really remember if there's, if archers cost 140 or 200. Anyway, we met Valletta, that's a militaristic city-state, they know the diff uh, secrets of the Legion. Ah, uh, that could be useful if you somehow manage to get them early. Getting out some early fishing boats is probably a very good idea, but I'm gonna go for a very early shrine and hope to get my pantheon. I'm sure if I can go for a religion this game, we'll have to see. Uh, depends on how many religious spammers there are. We can only found six religions, and hello, Catherine, nice to meet you again. Well, this is looking to be a very interesting game. We got Catherine, who's one of the biggest backstabbers in civilization. Uh, combined with, um, you know, Genghis Khan, who is one of the most aggressive fuckers in civilization. You know, we're off to a great start, truly. But the fact that they are so close to each other is actually a very good thing. Alright, I'm gonna unlock Honor now. Uh, what's good about Honor 2, a uh, nice little added bonus, is that you also immediately get notified whenever a Barbarian encampment spawn, which is quite nice. Well, looks like we've hit Tundra territory. Not a lot of interesting things gonna happen around here, that's for sure. Genghis Khan is not that close to me, but still close enough that I think an early game war is going to break out. Um, unless I somehow manage to make him fight with Catherine, which I could try to do. Um, we'll see how well that goes. Right now, I am considering expanding over here with, to the Coco, but I think grabbing the Grand Mesa is what I should do first. Um, the thing is, even if this is not a coastal city, I can still send fishing boats from Istanbul and work on this fish tile, and I think that's exactly what I'm going to do. If I settle right underneath the Grand Mesa, I will get wheat, I'll get a lot of good hills, I'll get sheep, copper, and eventually more sheep. So I think this is going to be my first expansion location, and I might try to go for it really quickly. Of course, expanding early on Raging Barbarians can be a tricky feat to accomplish. Um, but as long as you get enough escorts, you should be good. Hey, <laughs> escorts. So, um, but I'm actually not too sad about having aggressive neighbors. It just means my Warmongol Ring will be that much more justified. Okay, not a lot of good expand locations down in the Tundra. There seldom is. Um... You know, there's usually just... You can find some deer most of the time, but and possibly some sheep near the shoreline, but expanding in Tundra is almost never a good idea. Alright, let's grab Animal Husbandry. Let's reveal 
Um, let's reveal those horses. It will make it a little bit easier for me to decide where to settle my city. I think I'm going to go for a settler, actually, right away after the shrine. That might not be a horrible idea. Usually I like to wait until my city grows to... Uh, um, until my city grows to pop 4, but I think I'll make an exception just to try and grab that wonder. The thing about the Grand Mesa is, is, is it's a little bit of a tricky wonder. Oh, hello. Ethiopia. They are a very peaceful civilization. Um, they are actually very, like, they don't like to expand that much. They kind of like to settle their cities and do their thing. In the late game, they can become quite annoying because they like to spam a lot of wonders and culture. They can actually start to rank up, uh, ramp up a lot of tourism, so... They are an absolute bitch to kill if they have less cities than you. Because they get uh, a 20% combat bonus whenever they're fighting empires that are larger than themselves. Combined with their unique infantry, or riflemen I think they are, who gets a bonus near the capital. They are almost impossible to kill if uh, played right. Alright, I could actually go for a settler, and I think I will. Uh, I'm working all the high production tiles, that's 12 turns. I think that's justified. Um, getting the Grand Mesa is a really good wonder, and you know, some extra gold and extra production is always nice. Uh, although I don't think I'll be working the Grand Mesa right away, because it doesn't yield any food. To my knowledge, you don't get any special unique promotions from going through the Grand Mesa, but I'm gonna make absolute sure of that before I claim otherwise. Um, I can get myself an archer if I somehow rank up 200 gold. I will need to meet a city-state or two in order for that to happen. Luckily, uh, you do get honor if your city kills barbarians. So that is always nice. And that's Monty. <laughs> yeah, I recognize the Jaguar warriors. Yeah, Montezuma, another hyper-aggressive dude. Uh, not only is he aggressive, he's also very deceptive. Um... Yeah, this is this is this is gonna be an action-packed let's play. Just like so many aggressive civilizations so far. Well, that and Ethiopia. We can expect a lot of wars. Hopefully I can make these guys fight each other. They might just Ah oh, we have Morocco. Hello Morocco, nice to see you again. Or Ahmad Al Masood, I suppose is his name. It's just really difficult to pronounce. I just say Morocco. Well, these guys like to trade. They're not overly aggressive. They can be very difficult to fight in desert terrain due to their unique units, as well as their forts, which I like to build everywhere in the desert. Um, but yeah, not the most aggressive civilization you'll ever meet. So we have two very conservative passive uh, civilizations and three hyper aggressive ones. This could be interesting. Um, I fear that. Um, Ahmad al mashur as well as uh, Haile Selassie, is that his name? They're just gonna get wiped out. Now we just need Shaka and we'll have ourselves a grand party. Alright, my scout's actually leveled up now. Great. Alright, I'm gonna go for Ogliarchy. Try to get legalism, land elite and monarchy as quickly as possible. I'm not going for any wonders, so aristocracy is not really gonna be a huge deal. But I'm thinking of using my scouts as escorts, probably. Um... You know, I'm actually going to sell my embassy. I usually don't do it, but I, I really want to get some extra gold out so I can buy myself some archers. Normally, I almost never sell embassies, but I think I will do it this time around. Alright, let's grab some extra side on these bad boys and send them up to heal. I could grab some free culture from these guys, but I think I'm just going to let Monty fight them. Alright, uh, now I should most definitely go for writing and get myself an early library. You never want to neglect science for too long. That is usually very bad. Public declaration from Morocco. They're probably just protecting a city-state. Yeah, Buenos Aires. Not really a huge uh, surprise right there. Oh, I could probably get myself a freebie. That oh, could work. Uh, so my second city is probably going to go down here. If there's some better resources down in the tundra, I might consider settling away from the mountain. But I pretty much decided that the mountain is where I want to go. Um due to that juicy observatory, naturally. And I will actually be able to buy an archer very soon, which is going to be good. Uh, I haven't seen a lot of barbarians uh, yet, which is strange, considering I am playing on Raging Barbarians. But I suppose they're busy going elsewhere, harassing city-states and whatnot. I remember one time, me and Cyril played a game of Civilization without city-states. I am actually going to sell this embassy as well. We played a game with... Um, 
with uh, no city states and we played on a large map with very few AIs and as a result the barbarians actually destroyed everything because since there were no city states for them to harass they came to us instead and um, hmm, declaration of friendship with Jengish Khan yes I think I will do that uh, anyway as I was saying since the barbarians had nowhere to go they came to us instead and uh, the screen was black, let me just say that, with Barbarians. It was absolutely insane. Uh, never seen so many Barbarians in one place. Uh, they they literally sacked our cities. Alright, Darius. Uh, what can be said about this guy? A wonder spammer. Loves his Golden Ages. Is sure to build Sitzkinitska. It's his favorite wonder. Uh, very treacherous. He will backstab you. He has a deception rating of 7, which is the highest in the game. Um, quite aggressive, although not as aggressive as the uh, most aggressive guys like Shaka, Attila, Genghis Khan. This guy can be uh, very problematic to deal with diplomatically because he is not opposed to backstabbing at all. Anyway, I'm gonna buy myself my first archer now and send these scouts over to the left to see if I can scout out some good expand locations. Uh, we met Colombo, that's 15 gold, so we can just buy them immediately. That is always nice. Normally archers aren't the best escorts, but they work. You know, they work for what they do. Uh, I'm gonna keep selling my embassies, I think. It is nice to get an early game boost to your gold. Normally I like to just have embassies with everyone else, but normally you can get those very easily. You just sell them back, pretty much. Alright, so we have our first settler. Let's switch Istanbul back to deal. Let's actually control what tiles we're gonna work now. Um, I actually do want to work the city, so we're going to work these two. Those are worth two food. Ah, these are the tiles I'd like to work. Mr. the is going to grow in 16 turns, which is not fabulous, but... Um, I think I'm going to have to build myself more archers. There's no point in building workers if the barbarians are just going to um, pillage the improvements. You aren't going to accomplish anything by doing that. And Jengish Khan already wants to go to war, which is not very unsurprising. Um, or very surprising, I should say. It's already in the classical era, which is slightly intimidating, I gotta say. And we have entered the lands of Darius. Oh, hello there, archers. Uh, we do get a 43% bonus against barbarians, so we could get some experience in our scouts and maybe unlock scouting too, which would allow them to see a ridiculous distance. I do love having scouting too in my scouts. Um... But yeah, I definitely need another archer or two. Okay, this is not going so well. Um, gonna retreat. Doesn't look like there's that many good expand locations over there, actually. I'm uh, probably gonna stick to the mountains. Marbasir is playing Sid Meier Civilization! Hey, so am I. Wonder what he's playing. Maybe he's playing, doing, playing the goals? He's kind of doing that last play at the moment. Or maybe he started a brand new one. Marbusier absolutely agrees that the new Civilization game is garbage. He has like one let's play of it, which is quite hilarious. I don't think I've ever met a single guy who enjoys that game. It, it badly needs an expansion to work. But to its defense, Civilization 5 was garbage as well when it launched. Um, okay, what should we grab here? Uh, probably either the wheel or optics. I'm actually not sure. Mining is probably something, or yeah, we, we're gonna have to go for masonry so we can get, um, so we can improve the marble. Since we actually have marble, it's a shame I didn't go for an early game wonder. Well, <laughs> great library completed. That's very early, actually. Turn 35. That's one of the earliest great libraries I've ever seen. Normally, you'd have to wait until turn 40 to see the great library, but I guess not. All right, so uh, one, two, three. I, if I somehow, like, oh my god, <laughs> look at that. Like, uh, the tile, two tiles underneath the wheat tile. That would actually be very funny to expand there. You'd be, like, very... That city would be impossible to take, pretty much. But yeah, no, I want to expand next to the Grand Mesa. That will also give me horses. One, two, three. Yeah, it will. This is pretty much the expansion. Like, I could expand by the sea as well, but I want the observatory. And I could bring fishing boats in from Istanbul, so it's really no big deal. Alright, I'm gonna grab myself a 
Do I want to hard build the monuments? I suppose... Yeah, I have to now, because uh, legalism does not grant you free monuments in cities anymore. Uh, only when you found them. Uh, they grant you free amphitheaters, actually. Alright, so we don't need this archer here anymore. Um, we could send it to harass some barbarians, get some extra experience and some free culture. Yeah, that works. And then, once Istanbul is size 4, I might just build yet another settler, actually. Alright. So, let's uh, do some damage to these archers. Let's continue to heal up the scouts just a little bit, shall we? And a ruin! Wow! And we get three spearmen. Not bad. Alright, now we need to go for a library. Actually, uh, I really need a worker. I'm gonna go for a worker. I need to improve these tiles now. As much as I want a library, I want a, I need a worker. If I could get God of the Sea as a pantheon, that would actually be criminally good. Getting extra production from fishing boats is really fucking amazing. Alright, can I grab myself another promotion on these scouts? Almost. I really want to get a little bit of extra experience on these guys. Five extra experience, just so I can um, get scouting two on them. I should be able to do that. Uh... I'm gonna go back to Istanbul and heal up. I'm gonna send these guys down here to see what I can see. And I'm just gonna have some fun with these barbarians. At some point, I'm probably gonna send these spearmen back as well. Um, they're much better put to use near Istanbul, trying to fend off barbarians, than going around exploring. Oh, frame rate spike. Alright, I'm gonna grab legalism. I'm pretty sure... Oh, wait, that does you. It does give you a free monument now? I swear, it's so inconsistent. Oh, that's a polder. Yep. No, it's not. It looked like a polder. Okay, there's no way. <laughs> Even if William were in this game, there's no way he'd gotten polders at this stage. Um, do I want to go for a shrine? Probably. Shrines are very cheap. Because you do get a monument. Weird. I thought you didn't get monuments anymore in cities you've already constructed. That's lo I actually lost a couple of days of production due to that. That was very annoying. But hey, at least I have Monument in, in um, Adurn now, so that's good. Alright, let's see who this is. Red. This could be Ethiopia's territory, actually. I've already met him. Yeah, it does look like Ethiopia's uh, color scheme. Oh, crap. Ah, Morocco is going to kill these guys now. At least I'll get the honor from the barbarians. Thank God for that. But he's gonna take the encampment, which is a little bit annoying. Alright. Yeah, this is Addis Ababa. So we got two very peaceful... Oh no, no, this, this is Persia. And here we have Morocco. Morocco is actually expanding quite frequently. No, that, never mind, this is... Yeah, I'm colorblind, so it's like... Red, red, red! That is what I see. Yeah, I know these guys are different colors, because people have told me so. Um, these are different colors, and I do believe uh, Ethiopia is more like brown, but I can't for the life of me see the difference. So it's very difficult to me for me to tell these guys apart. I'm gonna have to look at their names, pretty much. That is just how it works for me. It's not easy being colorblind. Alright, let's have some fun with the archers. And um, in five turns, I am considering getting myself another settler. You have to grab land quickly. Also, I see some amazing expand locations over here. Actually, if I take this... Yeah, I should expand right here by the cotton. I would love to have a river between me and Genghis Khan. But expanding on top of a wheat tile is not a good idea. As you won't be able to reap the full benefits of a wheat farm. You'll still get the extra bonus uh, food, but... You'll struggle a little. Oh my god, a worker. Ooh. Yes, I think I will take that worker. But yes, I see f two very good expand locations. One up here, one next to the mountain here by the cocoa. We'll get some deer as well. See a lot of good cities overall. So this could be a this could be a good game. If I manage to get all the cities that I want, that is. And I'm having a lot of fun with barbarians. Oh, I could theoretically, yeah. Huh, I'm gonna take this worker. I'm not gonna give you're not gonna give Jengish Khan a free worker. Are you stupid? That is not happening. A free worker for me, that's great. And I took Jengish Khan's worker, so he's not gonna get it back. 
I'm happy about that. Holy crap. Two workers right from the bat. That's good news. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I think that is enough for the first part. Uh, do please consider leaving a like and a comment. It helps out a shit ton. And uh, yeah, I would like to hear what you think about uh, the start of this Let's Play. Looks to be quite an entertaining one with all these aggressive leaders everywhere. There's still a lot of people we haven't met, and uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to see how, where this game goes. If we're able to uh, restore the glory of the Ottomans Empire. So yeah, my name is Inmanx, and as always, I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye!